portion of our forum today. Um, we are thankful that you are all here with us today. We also want to thank our other co-sponsors as part of the Truman uh, Road Collective. I'm going to push this every single time. Truman Street Collaborative. Truman Street Collaborative. I don't know, I like collective better. But anyway, it is our neighbors uh, next door to Horizon School. Uh, it is also the Islamic Center of Burbank. And then our other neighbors uh, with the Korean American Center, uh, Tammy Kim is, uh, talk to her about that place, it's fantastic. Um, any event, so we appreciate you all for being here, and I'm going to hand things over to our moderator, uh, Xu Ping Yin. She is a longtime South Coast Chinese Cultural Association volunteer and participant. Uh, she was a former PTO president for kids went through the school, our Chinese school, many years ago when we were actually first building uh, this particular facility. She has actually moderated this particular forum for us uh, several times in the past. And one of the things that we try to do with the people that are assisting us with this process is we try to make sure that there are people that don't have a stake in this community. That is, that people that don't live in the city of Irvine, so no bias or anything like that. She actually lives in Costa Mesa. She's going to be assisted by our two question screeners, uh, John Lynn and Lisa Smith, who also do not live in the city of Irvine, but have been very active in our community and are familiar with a lot of the issues. So with that, I'm going to hand the microphone over to our moderator. Good morning. Welcome. Uh, You will have two minutes for opening and closing statement and 60 seconds for answering questions. Timers, we have timers right over there. And 30 seconds. Who's, hold, hold up the timer, please. Just hold up, yeah. 30 seconds, that means you have a 30 second remaining. And 10 seconds, 10 seconds. At this point, you should wrap up your uh, uh, speech and time up. There you go. And we will move up. At that point, we will move on to another one. So for audience, please silence your cell phone if you have them on right now. Treat your candidates fairly. Please remain quiet throughout the forum, no clapping, no cheering, no calling out. With the exception at the end, you may clap for all the candidates. You're encouraged to submit your questions. And we have a runners, Tammy and uh, Beatrice, with papers and pen. Write them down, and uh, your questions will be screened by John and Lisa, and duplicate question will be combined. So uh, for now, we will turn the floor to the candidates. So since there are just two of you, we'll just alternate answering the question. Please go ahead, uh, Ed, you can go ahead. Good morning. Yes. Good morning. My name is Ed Pope. Uh, I'm running for mayor of Irvine, making this pledge. I will honor and respect the express will of the Irvine voters. I will faithfully implement the June 5th voter mandate uh, to immediately begin the construction of our long-promised veterans cemetery at the Great Park. I chair the historic No on B referendum campaign. Uh, and that culminated June 5th in a 63% two-part mandate. First, we rejected the action to replace the planned Great Park Veteran Cemetery with a huge traffic-generating uh, commercial development. And second, we hold the mayor and the council uh, to immediately begin construction of the Veterans Cemetery. The City Council has refused to begin building the Veteran Cemetery. That's wrong. As your mayor, I will honor the will of the people. I'm a U.S. Army veteran. I'm a retired high school history teacher and was uh, Orange County High School Teacher of the Year in 1984. My wife and I live in the same Irvine home I purchased 46 years ago. 
I have been a community leader in the important fights to save Irvine open space, uh, to defeat the county's El Toro Airport plan, and create the Great Park and Great Park Veterans Cemetery. I respectfully ask for your vote. Thank you. Uh, my name is Ying Chiong. Uh, I moved here a few years ago. Uh, I have uh, three kids. On my right and I have three kids. One's in the high school, one's in elementary school, and one in middle school. So they're all uh, going to uh, the IUSD public school. Um, so I, I'm advocating for a few things for Irvine. Actually, uh, I have an acronym. I'll mention that later. So I think we should strike for a clean air, clean water, clean environment, clean school, free of harassment, uh, bullying, um, discrimination. Um, we have uh, we need to have a, a lean uh, fiscal uh, budget. We always been asked to um, do more with less. It's a challenge, but we should do that. We should always balance our budget. Um, we should be advanced in our technologies. We have uh, artificial intelligence. We have uh, augmented human intelligence. We should be advanced with that. And then we have a P. I talk about prepare. We need to be prepared for uh, emergencies. We need to prepare for uh, earthquake and all that, right? And then we also need to have uh, safety. We need to have a safe environment. Uh, so I use the acronym CLAPS, C L A P S. Clean, lean, advanced, prepare, and safe. So that's kind of my platform. I think we, we have a wonderful city. Um, you know, we have traffic issues, we deal with that, right? Because we live here. That's, if you want a city to grow, um, to grow, we deal with that issue. We can never fix the problem, but we deal with that. So, so I'm asking for a chance uh, to serve you. Uh, okay, thank you. Thank you. So we now uh, move into question and answer. First question. What actions would you take to promote understanding, appreciation, and integration of a multi-culture in Irvine? Well, I think uh, we not just have the Global Village Festival. I think that's one of the ways to, uh, to promote uh, different cultures. Uh, so, because a lot of times it's misunderstanding, right? Because something, there's so many things in culture that you cannot do or you can do, but we need just to be able to come together uh, as often as we can uh, to learn about other cultures. Um, I think that's one of the ways that we do that. Um, I think in school as well, in the school, uh, we have some of the children, we come home, we should edu educate them because they'll see something that's different than their culture. I think we need to, to learn that. I think it's that we have a diverse community. Uh, I think it's good. Uh, we, we, as a parent, we need to uh, help them to uh, appreciate other uh, cultures. Um, thank you. One of the, one of the, is this on? Yeah, okay, thanks. One of the things uh, about which I'm most proud uh, here at Irvine is our diversity. Our community is enriched by uh, all the um, cultural groups that reside here. Uh, we do celebrate that at least a couple of times a year uh, with a big international uh, festival of sorts. Uh, one of the things that, I, that strikes me about Irvine is that uh, while being so diverse, we are also very integrated. That is to say, there is not uh, a uh, Chinese neighborhood or a, a Korean neighborhood or a Euro-American neighborhood. We are all completely uh, integrated, and uh, my own street is a good example of that. All right, uh, question and answer. The answer is only one minute for this, okay? And so next question. What would you do, this one is from the audience. What would you do differently as a mayor from the current mayor? Wonderful question. Uh, First of all, the current mayor uh, seems to be more interested in representing the interest of a big developer, Five Point Communities. Uh, he and some of his colleagues on the council promoted Measure B, which would have replaced our cemetery with a, a vast commercial development generating yet more traffic. Uh, and so 
I'm interested as, in mayor as being a representative of you, the residents, uh, rather than taking my cues and my agenda from this big developer. Um, regarding that question, I think I'm going to uh, echo some of Ed's uh, sentiment. I think we should build a veteran cemetery. Actually, I had, we, and we had an idea, maybe we should take the strawberry field as our cemetery and then we we do a memorial in the Great Park, we take both ways. Why don't we do that? Because uh, veteran military, part of our culture, just look, look at our national anthem, right? Because all of our military, they protected us, give us this country. Uh, so that was, that I will be doing different than what uh, the man is doing right now. We're not building the cemetery, not doing anything about this. Uh, maybe we should just take both pieces of land and do something. Right, here's a, a pre-selected question. What are the top two challenges facing the city of Irvine, and what is your plan to resolve them? I think uh, I think the everybody talks about the traffic issues. So I think I mentioned earlier we can't really fix the problem as the, as the population grow. You have to deal with that. I mean, you know, we, the traffic is still not too bad. You know, consider you're going to a big city like LA and some other places. So I think we can, um, my opinion is that we can use a lot of technologies. We have um, things that we can do to help deal with the issues uh, with the traffic. Uh, I think that's one thing. And the other thing will be the, the safety, right? Just to make sure that our school is safe. Um, like we have any school shootings, we want to prevent that. Our community has to be safe. Um, even when we're sitting here today, we want to feel safe. So those are the two issues, the safety and the traffic issue. Okay, uh, let's be clear. Uh, the traffic situation is a direct result of overdevelopment. Uh, the current city council majority is now issuing about 4,000 residential uh, unit permits per year. The historical average here in Irvine has been 1,500 to 2,000. In the last five years, um, this council has, again, okay, 4,000, all right? So uh, I want to begin with cutting the number of residential permits in half, getting them back in line with our, our uh, general plan. Secondly, I'd like to expand uh, the I-Shuttle, which now serves only at the IPC part of the city. I would like to expand it for uh, a citywide program. And finally, let's have school buses back to end the morning traffic jams at our school campuses. Uh, there's another audience question. Um, there are two questions that mine. It's kind of similar. What is your plan to address the homeless issue? What would be your plan to ensure affordable housing? Go ahead, Ed. All right, first of all, homelessness is a regional and county-wide problem. Irvine does more than all the cities in, Ir in uh, Orange County combined. We're already doing our share. Uh, the, the county government has been negligent uh, on this issue. They have $230 million to spend on this issue. They have not spent that, and thus we have the problem. But again, Irvine is already doing more than a share, and we have a great local organization called Families Forward, which uh, helps address the needs of the homeless as well. Yeah, I think we already did a lot for the homeless. I don't know if there's anything else we could do uh, for them. Uh, this is a county issue, not just a city issue. Uh, and then for the affordable housing, I think we should uh, have more affordable housing. Uh, because uh, a lot of us working class people, uh, Irvine's living car has been growing, so we need to have affordable housing for people that can come here and work. We cannot just have everybody that's going to have a lot of money. We need people that also can live here and work here with their income so they can live here. So I think we should uh, maybe uh, work with the developers uh, to create more affordable housing. I think that's one thing we should uh, be looking into. Thank you. Another audience question. What specifically would you do to ease traffic and congestion 
and how would we pay for it? Um, I, like I mentioned earlier, I think the traffic issue it, it, it's difficult to solve. I mean, you can't really fix the problem, you deal with that. But I think with a lot of the uh, artificial intelligence, um, you have Google Maps, and Apple Maps, they have satellites, they have like, how, how cars driving. We should be able to find something. You know, if you see our professors here today, they should be able to figure out something. We should be able to uh, solve this problem, like uh, maybe make a ride a smart city, like Amsterdam. So what they did is that they actually reduced the traffic time by 10%. So imagine if you have to drive 25 minutes each way, you might can reduce 10% of that five minutes for you each day, how much time would you save? Maybe we're from Amsterdam, or some other city that uh, we hear a lot of the uh, people love artificial intelligence and things like that to improve the urban traffic. Thank you. Uh, okay, I've, I've already addressed this issue, but it uh, uh, bears repeating, I think, that the traffic is a symptom of the overdevelopment that's rampant in our city. We've gotten way out in front of our infrastructure, too much building too fast before there's adequate uh, in infrastructure. Um, my intention would be to cut the number of um, residential building permits in half from what the current council has been doing. Uh, as I mentioned, I want to see the eye shuttle program be citywide and not only serving uh, the IBC area. And again, we have these traffic jams on our school campuses, uh, and I think maybe the uh, school district needs to consider the restoration of bus uh, services to our campuses. All right, next question uh, from the audience. If you liked it, are you going to one, support, two, oppose, three, take no position, urban adopting sanctuary city policy in the future. I'll have to confess, I don't know what sanctuary uh, city policies are. Sanctuary. sanctuary. Oh, sanctuary. Okay, uh, appreciate it. I'll just say at this point that uh, Irvine is historically inclusive. Uh, we value diversity, which is characteristic, one of the finest traits of our city. And uh, I would certainly uh, welcome the, uh, the input of the police department in terms of any public safety issues that are, are related to the sanctuary city issue. Um, I think we have uh, the, the federal government is trying to make us safe again. So if you have a city that's not following the state or the federal laws, it will be difficult to enforce the law. So when I am an immigrant, so I think we should provide the illegal immigrants a pathway to legalize the status. I think we should relax some of the rules so we can actually be a citizen in the United States. Uh, yeah, yeah, we, we, the criminal, we, you know, some of the criminal, you know, we mentioned that again, MS-13, we shouldn't let them be in the United States, but some people we come in, you know, we want to be, you know, part of the great country, so we don't have a chance to, to do that. So, but I think, if, you know, divided, we fall, united, we stand. So I think we, we should be, you know, one well with the federal government. Thank you. Um, next question, creating a selected. New immigrants face challenges such as understanding the poli uh, political process, overcoming language barriers, utilizing city services. What action would you take to help them with these issues? I think we already have uh, many services that are doing that already today. So in school, the, the new child will come to uh, IUSD where BSL and several so things we're already doing for the. So I think my city is doing, I think it's doing very well with helping uh, a lot of the new immigrants trying to adapt to uh, uh, the new community. I think uh, maybe the local community, you know, maybe the Chinese community, the Korean, or the, the Indian, the Arabic community, we should be able to hopefully help with the new immigrants coming to help them learn about the political process. Um, you know, just, just going out to buy stuff, I think sometimes with the time it just comes to the United States. So I think, I think the local community should, uh, the group should be helping with some of these uh, new immigrants, um, not just uh, not not always the city has to do something. I think you know, as 
you know, we help them. Because also we should help our own um, people. Okay, thank you. Well, I'll have to agree with the Ng on that. I see the school as the institution best suited to integrate our, our new uh, residents and to help them assimilate. And I think, again, our school district um, has a deserved reputation for doing a good job in this area. Our next question is, uh, I think it's a yes and no question. And this is from the uh, audience. And uh, you don't have to time this. So this is for both of you. Have you received any funding from developers? <laughs> Emphatically not. Uh, I'm not their favorite uh, person because of my leadership in defeating their corrupt scheme uh, to force Measure B on our city. And uh, it's just a matter of principle. My, my effort citywide involved hundreds of volunteers. It was a, a truly grassroots defeat for the developer's scheme. And um, it was... It's out of the question. I would never take a dime from the developers. We have uh, council persons presently that, uh, whose campaigns are happily financed by Five Point Development, but uh, I reject that. Uh, definitely no. <laughs> All right, next question. What is one unique qualification that makes you an ideal candidate for mayor? Uh, I work as a uh, software application developer for a uh, healthcare organization. So we have a big